and then try to draw some revenues from the um, content providers and uh, all the top uh, providers as well. Now let us, uh, so, so far we have seen the challenges. So we have seen uh, the major challenges as traffic explosion. So how the traffic explosion is driving the cost and pushing down the revenues. And the second thing we have seen is like uh, the internet value chain and um, who is capturing more value, that by who is making more money out there and uh, what is the position of service providers in those entire value chain and we have seen what is the current scenario this looks like, then we have seen what is the scenario would look like post DPI, then we have also seen service providers now currently has one revenue model which is B2C, now we are trying to focus on the two-sided revenue model which is both B2C as well as a B2B. So that is one thing. So how are we going to do that is like we have suggested to do, we have suggested that DPI would offer, uh, enable service providers to offer some value added services. So what are the value added services? How we can collaborate with the um, content providers? We'll take a look at it. But here we'll take a look at it, how DPI will address those challenges. Or uh, primarily, how DPI is better positioned because there are lots of other devices uh, that can do part of the functionality and uh, so we have to figure out how DPI has the unique ability to do that. Uh, the unique ability comes in terms of packet inspection because that's what we have seen in the initial slide because DPI has the ability to inspect both the payload and header and it can uh, match the payload across consecutive packets to identify a pattern and then figure out to which application does this packet belongs to. That kind of a granularity will not be provided by any other device. So at the end of the day, some service providers wants to know how much of YouTube is occupying the entire bandwidth, they can get that uh, number. Or rather, how much of BigTorrent is occupying their bandwidth, so they can have the number. So that kind of a network visibility is what uh, is being rendered by the DPI. So we are not talking about in simple protocols, you know. Uh, what is the HTTP uh, usage in the service provider network or what is the video usage in the service provider network or rather what is the um, RTP usage in the service provider network. So we are not talking about the L3 or L4 protocols. What we are talking about is the application based usage. That kind of a granularity will be only driven by the DPI. So that's where DPI is gaining more prominence. Now the other part is like once we identify which application, um, to which application does this packet belongs to, the next part is to identify to which subscriber does this packet belongs to. Because we might have different set of policies to each subscriber, so we might have to differentiate subscribers. So the, the key is to identify to which subscriber does this packet belongs to. Now we have developed a two-way mapping. So to which application does a packet belongs to and to which subscriber does a packet belongs to. Now we have to go for a three-way mapping. Finally, we need to understand what are the policies and plans for that subscriber. Now accordingly, we need to act. So for that subscriber, if the voice is only 15 minutes and if he is going to talk for the 51st minute, then I have to cut down the call. So that kind of a Again, this account plan is very minimal, I mean very basic, very primitive. So what we can do with DPI is much larger than this, so I'll talk about it in uh, later slides. So what I'm trying to focus is like how DPI is trying to map three elements. One is like try to identify the application and try to figure out which subscriber does this application belong, uh, to which subscriber is uh, accessing that application and then try to map what are the policies of that subscriber and then act accordingly. So that's the typical functionality of the uh, DPI. So coming back to the DPA use cases, as I said, uh, what we are trying to focus is uh, revenue generation, which is a two-sided uh, revenue model that I've been talking about. So one revenue model is try to offer some additional services to the subscribers and thereby 
uh, generate more revenue from the subscribers. The second factor is like try to collaborate with the other providers. So when I'm talking about um, generating additional revenue from the subscribers, so again, uh, caution, a, a small caution is that the use cases that I've listed down is not covers the exhaustive list. This is part of the use cases, very major use cases that are predominantly targeted at the service provider market because as I said, there are other sections of market which also use DPI which is higher education, security and enterprise. So those needs might be a little bit more, uh, I mean their needs might be a little bit different than the service provider and over there we might have a different set of use cases. So this is just the sample use cases that I'm listing down and it is not an exhaustive list. So this is just a note of caution. So first thing is like tiered pricing. So tiered pricing is like, um, see initially like uh, some three, four years back, all we had is like uh, all you eat services. So it's a flat billing. So you pay 1000 you use the entire internet, there is no cap whatsoever. And from that model, we have evolved to a very basic tiered model. So stating that, okay, you pay 1000 rupees and then you can use up to uh, 5 Gbps and you pay additional 500, you can use up to 10 Gbps. So that's one level of uh, tiering that we are seeing right now. And this level of tiering can be done pretty much by other devices as well. Now the third level of tiering is what we are talking about can be done with the DPI which incorporates the usage based on the service. Now that tiering what I can say is like I have a plan so what I can define is like so I have a plan so all the basic web services are unlimited so browsing is unlimited but YouTube I only define up to uh, a limit as 500 max then Skype I only allow the user to make Skype call for uh, 60 minutes and um, I mean we can we can define such uh, tiered services I mean tiered plans or a cap based on services now that kind of a granularity can be brought in with the DPI next is bandwidth on demand so again small service providers are rolling this out so which we call it as a turbo button so they can buy bandwidth for a certain duration of time and use it and this again can be done with uh, some of the existing devices again what how DPA will be differentiated over there is like again services uh, based uh, uh, bandwidth on demand suppose for instance if someone launches bandwidth on demand and say that okay I'm going to give, offer you additional demand additional bandwidth so you pay me additional amount of uh, say X rupees and then I can offer you a bandwidth of uh, 50 megs and in that 50 megs I can offer you browsing free of cost and 50 megs will cover only video or music streaming such services can be done so those I mean uh, such services are what we have been talking with the help of DPI and next one is uh, parental control again we have this parental control being offered uh, by a lot of other players but they have to be installed in the desktop now we are talking about the parental control being offered by the service providers, maybe as a value added services uh, with the existing pricing model to better enhance the customer experience or uh, to enhance the customer satisfaction. When we talk about the B2B uh, revenue model, um, few, few uh, use cases that I've listed down as collaborate with OTT providers. One, one example might be collaboration with someone like Netflix saying that okay I can enhance your um, quality of experience so collaborate with me so I make sure that uh, Netflix videos are um, driven properly and will, give, will be given prioritization. So again it's like uh, copyright infringement so you can uh, tie up with any uh, either, either any music providers saying that okay uh, if there is any illegal music downloads of your album, I can try to block it out. So those kind of services can be done. And again, targeted advertising is again big thing. So since much of the traffic, user traffic goes to service providers, so service providers can create a profile of uh, uh, users and then can decide and then can uh, launch targeted advertising. So for instance, if I am constantly browsing on cards, uh, for a few days, then 
service providers can create a profile of me saying that Morley is interested in cards. Then they can throw some targeted advertisements uh, focusing on cards towards me. But the key problem here is like service providers doesn't have any screen presence with the uh, users. What I'm talking about is like they don't have a screen that directly interferes with the users. For example, if you take Gmail, uh, if you take Google as such, they have lots of interfaces uh, with the uh, end users. For instance, uh, Google search, uh, Gmail, so where they can flash their ads, but service providers doesn't have that screen, so unless they launch their own websites. Uh, so what service providers can do is like they can try to partner with some other uh, um, content providers and help them launch targeted advertisements. A small caution of notice like uh, I've not talked about net neutrality here, but uh, there is a raging debate that uh, this is against net neutrality. So whether to implement or not to implement, it still depends on the uh, loss of each and every individual uh, country because net neutrality loss varies uh, as per the country because in some countries targeted advertising by service providers considered to be illegal some cases it is considered to be illegal uh, in some countries they say okay targeted, targeted advertisement is legal but by default a subscriber should have been opted out and they have to mandatorily opt in if they have to receive advertisements so So there is a so with regard to targeted advertisement, there's a I mean not only with uh, targeted advertisement, with regard to a lot of other use cases as well, there is a still a raging debate whether service providers can incorporate all those services. So uh, that's that's a debate that's still going on. I just want to give a brief introduction about that. So net neutrality loss varies uh, according to the country. So whether a service provider can incorporate all these use cases depends on the uh, uh, loss of that uh, specific country. And the third and the second uh, use case is the cost management. So one use case that we have so far seen is the revenue generation where uh, the use case that I am uh, targeting or which I am talking about is like more focused on increasing the revenue for subscribers either through BC, B2C model or through B2B model. Now, we have to focus on the other part because what we have seen earlier is like traffic explosion leads to the increased cost. Now we have seen how to increase the revenues. Now we have to see how to manage the cost. Now from that perspective, uh, th there are two key things. One is network analytics, another is the traffic shaping. Network analytics is, it merely gives you a, a peep into what has been, uh, who has been using your internet and how uh, people are using your internet. As I said earlier, DPI has the ability to identify which application uh, is currently running on your pipe. So it gives you a sneak preview into it, who is occupying, which application is occupying the majority of your bandwidth. So that kind of a network analytics, analytics will help you to um, either launch some services or to define your uh, traffic shaping policies. For instance, if you find out through your network analytics, uh, P2P is forming your major chunk of your uh, bandwidth, then you can define some traffic shaping policies to uh, curtail uh, P2P alone and you can do so for specific subscribers alone. So that is again possible. So I was just waiting for the slides to come up uh, on the internet. Um, so I've just, uh, I mean, um, I'm talking about uh, all the use cases. So I was just thinking about presenting one example alone because tier pricing is becoming more familiar among all the use cases. So I just thought I'll, uh, I'll put uh, one example alone because this is what I've been uh, uh, telling earlier, uh, flat rate plans, so which has been, sorry, so flat rate plans which has been in, uh, market a uh, little more than three, four years earlier, but slowly service providers has been moved to usage based. Uh, but again, this is very primitive tier plans. So third step is what I've been talking about that can be done with uh, DPI where you can define policies on a per service level. 
So that kind of a tiered servicing will be more uh, innovative. And to define this tiered service is what uh, we need a, a clear analytics. So how much of your network has been used? So who is using your network? So from uh, which part of your kind of a report on demographics, on um, application? So that kind of a granular analytics will help you define all this uh, policies. The key thing is like DPI provides the infrastructure. It is up to the service providers how they are going to use this infrastructure and then bring up, uh, uh, come up with some innovative uh, pricing plans. So these are some of the use cases that is primarily targeting service providers from being a dump pipes to convert themselves into a smart pipes. So this is just one of the use cases and uh, predominantly most of the use cases that we are trying to focus uh, with the help of DPI. The core idea is to move them away from the dump pipes to the smart pipes and enhance their revenue generation capabilities. <laughs> 